Hey Pretty Girl Club, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So today I want to talk about privilege stacking and what your privilege stacking goals are. The reason that I call it privilege stacking is because that is the best phrase that I could use to uh, describe what I'm talking about. In case you haven't noticed, we come up with a lot of words and phrases on this channel and that's because a part of creating a mixed race or multiracial culture a part of doing that is building a language to describe what you're talking about. Um, notice how lots of other ethnicities, they have their own languages, they have their own slang terms, they have their own phrases that they like to use. So that's really the reason why I like to come up with different terms on this channel, like privilege stacking, or I like to coin certain terms like social climbing. So maybe I didn't make up that term, but I'm just kind of coining it and popularizing it so that we can begin to build our own culture. That is also why I call us the Pretty Girl Club, because I've noticed that other cultures and ethnic groups and other uh, like smaller groups of women, they have their own cool names and phrases that they use to describe their themselves. Like they say black girl magic, or they say melanin poppin, or they say like they're a spicy Latina or something like that. So that is a part of why I uh, came up with the phrase Pretty Girl Club. I was trying to come up with an affirming name for all of us that will help us to build our confidence but if you guys have any ideas for different phrases or slang terms that you feel accurately describe our experiences or things that you want me to talk about on this channel, just let me know in the comment section. But today I'm talking about privilege stacking and my personal privilege stacking plan for the next 10 years. The reason that it is important for me to kind of have a plan in my mind is because I've noticed that I tend to have a better success rate if I have a plan. I've noticed that Whenever I sit down and plan something, first of all, I enjoy every minute of it. Like I love planning for myself. I love planning my own level up. It's actually a lot of fun. Like when I start to think, okay, by the 4th of July, my boobs are going to look really good. Or, you know, by June 1st, my legs are going to be really smooth because I started using lotion on March 1st. I like the buildup and the excitement that comes along with sticking to my plans. It's kind of like, you know how people online, they go on these hair growth journeys and stuff and they'll be like, they'll be like, okay, for 30 days, I'm going to put Jamaican black castor oil in my hair. And then by day 30, I'm going to measure my hair and see how much it's grown. That is the benefit of planning for me. Um, but I know that some of you guys, you may be different. Maybe you kind of like winging it. So I like to have both. I like to have a plan and a routine, but I also like to be able to be flexible in my routine. So right now, my daily routine is to make content, exercise or move my body somehow, and do some sort of side hustle, like to create a side income. Because just in case anything bad ever happens to this channel, you just never know. So those are the three things that I do every single day. But the way that I mix it up is I can switch around the timing. So sometimes I create my content in the morning. Other times I will create content at night. Sometimes I will go to the gym and then other times I will go on a hiking trail. So that is the way that I'm still keeping variety in my life because I've noticed that if I have a life that is very monotonous and boring where it's like every single day all I do is work go to the gym, go to sleep, repeat for the next 50 years. Yes, that is going to make me very bored and depressed. So that's my way of keeping excitement is just by kind of switching it up. And also having a sense of structure in my life, but also allowing myself the freedom to explore or kind of have like almost a recess, I guess that's what I'll call it. Um, I try to have like a daily recess where it's like, okay, I'm going to sit around for two hours or I'm going to, you know, have free time on a Sunday, usually Sunday afternoons are when I like to free up my time to do whatever I want. And that is normally when I will start driving to a random store that I've always wanted to check out and just browsing around. That's actually how I found all of those specialty meat markets that I talk about in the Patreon. Um, one of my free time hobbies is I like to go to fancy grocery stores. I am a grocery snob. Sometimes I can spend like over $200 a month just on my own personal groceries. That may not sound like a lot to other people, but to me, it's actually, I think that can be kind of expensive. But for me, that is my hobby. So I'm talking about this because I want you to start thinking about what privilege stacking means to you. Because remember, the reason we're stacking our privileges is so we can attain the soft life. So 
first you want to ask yourself, what does a soft life mean? So for example, with me, a part of what makes my life soft or what makes me feel like I have a soft life is being able to have the free time to go and explore different luxury grocery stores and being able to go and purchase like some pre-marinated meat and then, you know, maybe take it back home and cook it that evening. That makes me feel soft because I feel rich knowing that I have all of the flexibility and the free time to drive 10 miles away so that I can check out this brand new meat market. Or, you know, I don't have a bunch of kids waiting at home and a husband waiting at home for me to cook dinner. So I can drive really far if I want to and just go to the near the nearby city and see what kinds of grocery stores they have. That makes me feel like I have the soft life because in my opinion, having free time is a luxury. So when I used to work these crazy ass jobs that were super stressful, by the time I got off work, I was so mentally exhausted that it literally made me physically tired. And so in my opinion, that was a hard life. That was not the soft life for me because I didn't have any extra energy to invest in myself. But in the Pretty Girl Club Discord, um, a lot of you guys were talking about how you literally have entire PDFs and bullet points and you guys put stuff in your notes and your phone and you guys write down and plan what you're going to do. Like you guys will plan skincare routines or you will have an entire hair growth plan. I know that one of my friends, she has an entire workout plan for herself. She'll be like, okay, on Wednesdays I will do weights and then Thursdays I'm going to do like cardio. Then I'm going to do my arms. Then I'm going to do legs. Then I'm going to do stretching. So that is what I mean when I say creating a 10 year plan as far as privilege stacking. And by the way, if you are overwhelmed when I say 10 years, you can start to break it down into smaller increments. So for example, with my 10 year plan, so I'm 32 right now. So by the time I'm 42, um, I want to have my own condo. I decided I actually, I do not want a house. I do not want to live in a really big empty space. I've noticed that about myself. So I am going to be tailoring my own living situation to what I prefer. So I just want a one bedroom. And I've noticed that the my dream condo or like the type of condo that I would want to have, it's going to be around $500,000. That's okay. I'm not buying it right now. Um, this is just like probably around within the next 10 years or so. And by the way, I'm not looking for advice on the housing market or for people to tell me when I should or shouldn't do any of these privilege stacking goals. I'm just talking about them to, to kind of give you guys an example of where I see myself in 10 years so that you guys can begin to think for yourselves like, okay, where do I see myself in 10 years? So let's say you're 25 years old. Where do you see yourself when you're 35? Do you want to still live in the same city? Do you want to live in that same place where you're living right now? Do you see yourself driving the same car? Um, do you see yourself having a YouTube channel? A lot of you guys have been starting YouTube channels. By the way, please, by all means, if there's one thing you get from this channel, please start a YouTube channel. There are so many bags when it comes to YouTube. My channel just hit 13,000 subscribers today and I looked on my uh, my video history. I just made my how I gained 11,000 subscriber video less than a week ago. So there's definitely money in YouTube. There are a lot of people who are looking for videos to watch, especially like interesting videos where nobody really talks about it. This niche this is actually becoming a niche now. Um, this niche, the exotical sphere, or like kind of talking about MLS issues or like talking about the concepts of privilege stacking, even the decentering men niche. Um, this is a very brand new niche on YouTube. So I would suggest hopping on the bandwagon before it becomes an actual bandwagon or like, you know, getting on the ship before it takes off. Because I do feel like social media, um, there are lots of trends and stuff on social media. And I really do feel like the types of stuff that I talk about on this channel are so new and so unique. And I feel like that's a part of why people are coming to this channel and subscribing to it because you can't really find content exactly like mine anywhere else on YouTube. But by the way, there's room for everyone at the table. This is not just my, you know, I, I don't own these talking points or anything. So I would say if one of your privilege stacking goals is you want to be able to quit your job, you want to be a content creator, or you want to just work a part-time job because not everybody's goal is to completely quit their job. Some people just want to work part-time or one to two days a week. Maybe you just want to work at a coffee shop on the weekends and that's easier for you than working 40 hours a week. Please 
create a YouTube channel. You don't even have to show your face. You can just talk on your phone. Like you can go on voice memo or go on some sort of recording app and just talk and just I'm telling you, people will watch your content. You'd be shocked at the type of content that people will watch on YouTube. People will watch damn near anything if you're consistent enough. I watch videos of girls working out when I'm at the gym because it motivates me. I watch videos of people um, who talk about what they eat in a day. So it's like I watch the most random stuff. And I know that if I watch random content, other people are willing to watch random content as well. So I strongly suggest that all of you guys here in the Pretty Girl Club make your own YouTube channels. But if you don't want to make a YouTube, even making like an Etsy shop or something or some sort of, I don't know, an Instagram page or something where you can make money online, I think that that's going to be really helpful because especially since we go through a lot in the workplace, you know how people can be like very catty and stuff. Honestly, I believe that part of the reason why people are catty in the workplace is because they know that they traded in their dreams for a paycheck. They're trading in their lifetime dreams so that they can make XYZ amount of dollars every two weeks. And I've noticed that especially the really old people who are working these nine to five jobs that are unsatisfying, those tend to be some of the most angry and bitter people, I'm just being honest, because they know I just wasted the last 40 years at this crappy company and I hate my life. And so sometimes when they see someone who is maybe younger or your whole life doesn't revolve around your job, it makes them feel triggered because it reminds them of their own failures. And so that can cause people to literally want to torment you in the workplace. And I don't want us in the Pretty Girl Club to have to deal with these dusty people that are in society. Like, I'm sorry. I don't care if I sound like a snob. I don't care if I sound mean. But the bottom line is a lot of nine to five style jobs or full-time jobs of any kind do have people who have given up their dreams. So I understand if your 10 year privilege stacking plan is to somehow get out of the nine to five or at least just make it part time or you know maybe work a job that is less serious like work at a restaurant instead just a couple days a week or work at your favorite makeup store instead or something. So you may wanna think where do I see myself and also what is the best environment for me mentally? But anyway, Sorry if I'm rambling again. Um, so another part of my 10 year privilege stacking plan is I want to eventually, like I want to gradually transition into having more of a whole foods diet. So instead of eating a bunch of frozen processed meats and like stuff that you can buy at Walmart that comes in a package, my goal is within the next 10 years to have a diet that is like majority uh, raw fruits and vegetables or like Maybe I can still eat meat, but just like the fresh meat that you buy from a meat market. And so part of how I have begun doing that was I literally started by saying, okay, can I change 1% of my diet, like starting today? So let's say I eat 100 items in a month. Can one of those 100 items be a piece of fruit? So I started off by, you know, eating one healthy item out of every about 100 or so. And then I gradually brought it up like, okay, can I have 10% of my diet be healthy? Can I have 20% of my diet be healthy? And now I've noticed that I'm at about 25% of a perfectly healthy diet. So for example, right now I'm eating a bowl of, I have some kiwis in front of me. I've got some raspberries, some blueberries. So I've noticed that now I've been able to build up to about 25%. And then I expect that as time goes on, I'm going to start eating even more healthy stuff. So that's the way that I kind of build it up. I don't start off by saying, oh no, I'm going to go from eating whatever I want to suddenly just going vegan or something like that. I have tried that before and I, I failed within like three months. I was in such a bad mood. But anyway, that's another thing you can think about. Like, what do I want my diet to look like? What does a leveled up diet look like for me? What does a leveled up grocery shopping experience look like for me? Um, I know that one thing I'm working on in that area is I also need to get some more organizers for my uh, for my cabinet. So like, you know how they have the little meal prepping containers and stuff. That kind of stuff would be very helpful because I can just come home, chop my vegetables, put them in some mason jars or something, and then I have them for when I do my cooking throughout the week. I can just dump the vegetables into the skillet and then like, you know, scramble some eggs or whatever. And I have some vegetables, like I, I would have more vegetables in my diet. But another thing that I started thinking about was in terms of decentering men, what are my goals with decentering men? Because 
Is my goal happiness? Is my goal to find a better man? Because I've noticed that sometimes if you decenter men with a goal to find a better man, that's kind of like still centering men, in my opinion. But I've even thought about that. Like when it comes to decentering men, what is my goal? My goal is to have increased confidence. My goal, my goal is to have better self-esteem. My goal is to have more peace in my life. My goal is to not allow a breakup or, you know, something that didn't work out, to not allow that to destroy me or crush me. My goal with decentering men is also to stop projecting an image onto a guy that does not exist. So stop projecting a whole entire future onto him or thinking like, oh, what would his last name sound like on my name? And oh, what would our life look like 10 years from now? There's a 70% chance that whatever man you're with, your boyfriend, your friends with benefits, whatever, there is a 70% chance on average that he is not going to be in your life for the rest of your life. So my uh, privilege stacking goal or like a part of it is decentering men to the point where I am grounded in reality, so I'm looking at the real statistics, the real numbers, especially if you're the type who dates a specific kind of man, like maybe you specifically date black men or you specifically date white men, looking at actual statistics and numbers about men in general, like for example, women are outpacing men in education. So there is a less, like there is a, a good chance that whatever man you meet, you are probably going to be more educated than him. And don't even get me started on if you have some sort of master's degree or you're a doctor or if you have like some extra certifications outside of just a bachelor's degree. So that is something else that I had been thinking about when it comes to my 10 year privilege stacking plan is where do I want my decentering men? Um, like where do I want to be on that journey 10 years from now? So one of the best things that I have discovered with decentering men is I stopped being a good girl, for lack of better words. I stopped caring about trying to dress super modestly and trying to be all wholesome and all that. So I stopped caring about that, and it actually helped me to embrace being sexy more. So I guess my 10-year goal is to continue embracing that and to not care about how a guy sees me or to not care as much about the male gaze. So when it comes to my privilege stacking goals, I like to break it down into every single little thing. And an another thing is... You want to ask yourself, what are the most important privileges to me? There's no wrong answer. So like for me, some important privileges are uh, pretty privileged. That's important to me because even if you are single, navigating through society as a single beautiful woman, it will get you benefits. It will get you, in my opinion, just as many benefits as being married or being in a relationship or whatever, um, but without the arguing part and without the... I have to like cook and clean and do all this domestic stuff. So pretty privilege is very important to me. Another privilege that's very important to me is wealth privilege. I do want to become more wealthy as time goes on. I want to like have money and stuff because you need money to navigate life. I also care a lot about having influence in society. So this channel is a major tool that I use to influence people um, in a positive way or in what I consider to be a positive way. So I know that others may have different um, opinions than me and that's okay. But yeah, influence, like having social influence is very, very important to me. So even if YouTube didn't exist, I would be trying to be influential in some other way, like doing a podcast, maybe writing books or starting some sort of business and hoping to grow the company really big. Influence is important to me. Another part of my 10 year privilege stacking plan is I want to um, enjoy myself more. So I do have goals as far as self-esteem. So one of the main pieces that I've been working on a lot because I'm an extrovert, so I, so I tend to thrive more around people. But one of the things I've been working on over the past couple of years is thriving on my own. So for example, um, celebrating the holidays on my own, like by myself and still having fun and not associating fun with only being around a bunch of people or, you know, I have to be around my whole entire extended family on Thanksgiving in order to have a good Thanksgiving. No, I have been really doing a good job, in my opinion, on getting better at enjoying my own company as opposed to staying around toxic people because that was something that I used to struggle with in my 20s. I was, like, best friends with everybody. I was one of those girls who, like, 
I had to hang out with everybody. I had to like constantly be going out with people and like doing all these different things. And there was just so much drama from having friends, you know, in every corner or having fake friends basically. And so one of the things that I learned is to be more selective with who I spend my time around and to not get sucked in because it's like fun. You know, it se it seems fun if you have like a girl group and you go out and then you guys all dress alike and then you get to talk and stuff. That seems fun. And so that's that was one of my desires when I was in my early 20s and it got me into a lot of drama. So one of my self-esteem goals as far as privilege stacking, because having high self-esteem is a massive privilege, um, but one of my self-esteem goals was enjoying my own company more. So one of the things that I've been doing, you guys have seen me talk about it in the Patreon. Um, so like for Valentine's Day, I would buy myself stuff or like for Christmas, I bought myself a Christmas present as opposed to waiting for a guy to buy me something or hoping that somebody remembers me or hoping that somebody else thinks about me and decides to make me feel special. One of my main privilege stacking goals in terms of self-esteem is learning how to make myself feel special. So I have talked about this on other videos and probably on the Patreon. Um, you know how some people have seasonal depression or they get sad around the holidays or if it's rainy. So I feel like I have maybe not seasonal depression, but like once it hits spring and summer, those are my two worst seasons of the year because in spring I tend to have very bad allergies. So it makes me not want to go out. It makes me not want to like do anything. And then in summer, um, I sometimes have the allergies still and it's hot. You know, I have like armpit sweat stains and shit. Like my makeup's all oily. My hair gets frizzy from the humidity and I just get into a bad mood. So one of my um, privilege stacking goals as far as self-esteem and as far as like knowing how to um, manage my own inner happiness is I have been going out of my way to try to celebrate the spring and the summer so that my mind doesn't always associate it with, oh, this is sad. So for example, um, on March 1st, I know that that's technically not spring, or actually maybe I'll do it on the first day of spring when I go grocery shopping and if spring is about to begin or it's gonna be the first day of spring, I'm going to get myself a nice, bouquet of flowers that is like very bright and you know kind of reminds me of spring i don't know why the color lavender kind of reminds me of springtime or like light blues and stuff so that's one of my goals i'm going to start doing well i actually already have i started this about a year ago um this will be my second year doing it but doing things to celebrate the season that i'm in as opposed to dreading oh crap here comes spring again oh shit my allergies are going to be horrible so one thing i did in terms of allergies was i started taking allergy medicine i've already started it so it's already in my body my immunity is already building up so i take like the licorice root pills that you can get from amazon those are like amazing i've also been doing things to build my immune system so that i am not constantly a victim to the season that I'm in. So I think that that's actually applicable for whatever season you're in. Let's say you really don't like Christmas because something bad happened around Christmas, or maybe you don't like your birthday because you feel like you have bad luck on your birthday or nobody wants to hang out with you. Is there something special that you can do for yourself? Can you buy yourself a cute bouquet of flowers? Can you take the day off? Because also another thing I've noticed is that a lot of the standards that we place on ourselves are externally based. So who created this rule that if it's your birthday, you have to have a big party or you have to hang out with all these people or if it's Thanksgiving, you have to hang out with family. But it's like, no, what if you have a toxic family or what if you just don't feel like traveling or driving eight hours to see your family? What if the weather is just bad and you just want to sleep in on Thanksgiving? Who created these rules that like you have to celebrate a holiday a certain way or you have to celebrate your birthday a certain way? You do not have to do that. Um, I believe that there are ways that you can make yourself feel special without anybody else even being there. And honestly, for me personally, um, a part of why I was so male centered was because I did associate relationships with my holidays are going to be better. My birthday is going to be better. Valentine's day is going to be better. So if I don't have a boyfriend, then it's going to be worse. Like I'm just going to, you know, nobody's going to really be celebrating me. My friends might be busy or something, so it's not going to be as fun. So I really do feel like if you try to impose rules on yourself or if you if you are just trying to fit in with other people, it makes you uh, more likely to be insecure. Or at least that was what happened to me. It made me more insecure. 
about being alone because I was like, oh, well, everybody else, they, they all hang out on Thanksgiving with their extended families or they all um, have big birthday parties and stuff. So maybe I should try to like throw a party or something. But no, a part of my privilege stacking journey when it comes to stacking up my self-esteem and raising my self-esteem is learning how to make myself feel special, learning how to enjoy my own company more as opposed to constantly depending on others to make my life exciting. I have learned how to incorporate excitement into my everyday life. So yes, this year, this is probably the first year that I actually am looking forward to spring and summer. So like last night, I've noticed that the sun is starting to set a little bit later. Like it was setting at like around 6 p.m. or like 6.30 the other night. Like it seemed like the sunset was just lingering. So the sky had this beautiful golden orange color like when I was driving. So I enjoyed that moment yesterday instead of saying, oh shit, this means the pollen's gonna come out. Oh my God, this means mosquitoes are gonna come out. Instead of having a negative attitude, I learned how to enjoy something about the spring or enjoy something about daylight savings, which is coming up in a few weeks. And another thing that I've learned with my privilege stacking journey is that time is going to pass you by either way. So 10 years are going to pass me by, you know, if I'm alive in 10 years, then the time is going to pass. One day I'm going to be 10 years older. So I can either just wait for the time to pass me by and just kind of passively live my life in the background, or I can have that main character energy. That's something Shira Seven talks about, main character energy. I can have the main character energy and take back my power over my own life and do my own level up journey, whatever that means for me, and look my best or, you know, just um, live the dream life that I've always wanted to live. And by the way, living your dream life or living the soft life, it's going to have a different definition for everyone. So for example, this is really random, but a part of living the soft life for me means that I have smaller boobs. Yes, I know that's really random, but I'm going to explain why. So part of why living the soft life for me means having small boobs is because I have gone my whole life with, you know, having, I have an hourglass shape. So that means I've got boobs and butt. I'm still slim, but you know what I mean. So I have already lived my whole life up until age 32 where I would have to think about the type of shirt I'm wearing, especially in the spring and summer. And I would be like, oh, I can't really wear that because it's not supportive enough. Oh, I can't really, I can't wear a backless top or that strapless top because I just feel like I'm going to have a wardrobe malfunction. Oh, I can't wear this sports bra because I feel like I'm going to be bouncing all over the place when I go running and stuff. So in the past, I had this mindset of, you know, with my boobs, like trying to constantly, I guess, cover them up or control them, kind of control the movement. And so last summer, I experimented with just letting them be free. So just showing whatever cleavage I wanted or, you know, just not caring. And that was fine. Like it was better than the first one. Like it was better than trying to cover everything up 24 seven. But then I realized, okay, no, I think the best soft life for me is to just not have any at all, just to have really teeny tiny boobs so that number one, I can meet the aesthetic that I want to meet, which is being extremely thin. Number two, I like, um, or I would like to be able to wear whatever shirt I want, like strapless, backless, um, halters, something where it's just holding me up by two strings, or just shopping online and getting those $3 shirts and being able to walk around with them in the summertime. I've never had that. I've never experienced that. And so I would like to experience that for the first time. So that is a part of what made me decide to get my boobs done. So I'm super excited. My boobs are going to be done by the 4th of July. I'm going to be um, I already have my plan because like I said, I'm trying to make the summertime more fun for myself because in the past I used to hate summer. So for the 4th of July, I am planning on wearing a cute little, I don't know, some sort of like top or something, a summery top and maybe I'll go to some sort of fireworks show or something um, and I'm going to enjoy myself in my little bra top with my little shorts on. So a part of my dream life actually included plastic surgery, even though I did not think about that before. So before, like when I was more male centered and when I cared more about what others thought of me, I used to be influenced by their talking points like, oh, well, guys really like it when you have an hourglass shape. Guys like boobs or no, you have the perfect body. So you should just like not change it. And it's like, just because you think that I have a perfect body, that does not mean that I think I have a perfect body. So it's okay to have a different body standard for yourself or a different beauty standard for yourself than what others have for you. So 
that has been really cool to finally realize that and to make the decision of, yes, I'm going to have a small boobies. And then I decided that like, if a few years go by and maybe I don't like them or something, or maybe I feel like they're too small, that's what a push-up bra is for. That is what, you know, fat transfers are for, like depending on how much money you have. People get fat transfers in their boobs to make them bigger or they get the implants. Um, but anyway, this is, I'm going on a tangent. But when it came to my personal privilege stacking goals, being able to wear a backless shirt, I have never in my life been able to wear a shirt with no back on it or where the back of it is just being tied up by strings. I've never been able to do that. And so that's something that I've always wanted to do. It's important to me. And I'm talking about this because maybe for you, there is something that you have always wanted to do. And to other people, maybe they think it's like really random or it's not that important. But if it's important to you, then it's important. So for some people, maybe you've always wanted to try highlights. Maybe you've always wanted to grow your hair out or maybe you wanted to cut it short. Maybe you've always wanted to shave your head bald or you've always wanted to try some faux locks, or maybe you wanted to try relaxing your hair or texturizing it, or um, I don't know, you know how they have those curly perms, like maybe you've always wanted to do that. Maybe your hair does not have volume and it's very flat and you've always wanted to try making it more curly. If that desire is in your heart, you should go after it. If you feel like it's going to cause you to um, have a softer life or it's going to help you with your privilege stacking journey because in my opinion, having high self-esteem or loving the way you look, that is a huge privilege. 99% of people in this world do not love how they look. So if you love how you look, you are already, in my opinion, like in the top 1% in terms of self-esteem. And this is why people get pissed when you look good and when you think you look good. This is why people get so mad because they're like, dang it, that's not fair. Like that's such a huge privilege that she has confidence. That's that's such a huge privilege that she likes the way her skin tone looks, that she likes the way her hair looks. She likes how her eye color looks. She likes how her nose and lips look. So when it comes to privilege stacking, um, liking how I look has been a big part of my privilege, privilege stacking journey. So this is why it's important for me personally to go to the gym. It's, it's important for me to take care of my skin and to uh, grow out my hair and stuff like that because I feel like it's a huge privilege to like how I look. There are some people who don't care about how they look. And if you don't care, then that's fine. And if you are happiest when you don't care, then don't care. And you just have to do what's best for you. But part of the reason why I made this like my 10 year privilege stacking plan is because I realized that when it comes to leveling up, it is a lifelong journey and it's fun. It's it's a lifestyle. Leveling up is a lifestyle. I love like thinking of new ways that I can level myself up, even if it's something small, like, oh, what manicure can I do for the 4th of July, for example, to match my, you know, to match my little cute top that I'm going to be wearing? Is there like a certain manicure I can do? Is there is there certain nail art that I can do to go with the spring? Because, you know, spring's coming up. So maybe I'm going to start painting my nails white and then I'll put like a little flower rhinestone or like a little flower sticker on my nail or something. And that's going to get me more in the spring mood. So leveling up, it can be with big things or it can be with the small details about yourself and who cares if nobody notices it because I've noticed that anytime I do my nails and my nail art nobody really notices I remember one time about four years ago I was at work and there was one lady who noticed my nails and she complimented them and I was like oh my gosh like that literally made my day but it's not um it's not very common for people to notice the small details about you but you know who does notice the details about you yourself. So when it came to my little nail manicure that I did, I remember I painted my nails blue and I painted clouds on my nails. So it was blue with like white clouds and it was springtime. So, you know, that's why I did it, like painting clear blue skies and stuff. So when the lady complimented my nails, yes, that made me feel good, but I already felt good because I knew that I loved myself enough to pay attention to the small details. So that is something else that I love about the level up lifestyle. That's what I love about the privilege stacking lifestyle. I mean, you never know when you want to go out one day and it's summertime and then boom, your nails are already done. Or, you know, it's really hot today and maybe you decide to wear sandals. Welp, your toes are already done. So I like having those small feelings where I already feel prepared. I feel ready to go. I feel like I'm ready for the world. I enjoy having that feeling and that makes my self-esteem go up because it makes me feel more put together. 
But another thing that I think about when it comes to privilege stacking is I do think about fun, like what my fun routine is going to be. That's the best way I can describe it. What types of fun do I plan to have over the next 10 years? I plan to travel for sure. Um, one of my traveling goals is I like to travel out of the country with my family about once a year on average. We usually go to Mexico, but we can, you know, hopefully my family will want to go somewhere else eventually. I still love going to Mexico though because it's still fun. So even if my level up goals are not perfect and even if I traveled only one time this year instead of five, I still consider that to be a success because in my opinion, there is no way to fail at leveling up. The only way that you fail is if you quit and if you give up on yourself. That's the only way that you fail. But privilege stacking is a lifestyle. It is something where you can choose to incorporate different habits into your everyday life so that you can start to live the soft life. I don't really like how people revolve the soft life around being picked by some rich man or, you know, hopefully this rich man will pick you, then you don't have to work a job. Or hopefully you are smart and talented, which I'm sure you are, and you can start a YouTube channel, which is technically working from home. You can make money selling things online, which is technically, you know, you're working from home or you are working mostly from home. So when it comes to living the soft life, I believe that um, there are many different paths to living the soft life. And I also think that living a soft life means something unique for everyone. So for some people, it's working from home. For other people, it is living in another country. For some people, it's, you know, being child free or not having to worry about paying for kids but you get to decide what you want your privilege stacking journey to be. You get to decide like what your plans are or, you know, you don't have to make a very specific plan. You can just say, hey, you know, within the next six months, I want to straighten my teeth. Like I want to get some braces or something. So let me start putting away a little bit of money on the side every month so that I can save up for my braces. And also I've noticed that with me, privilege stacking actually motivates me a lot. So for example, I upload so many YouTube videos because number one, yes, I love talking about this stuff, but I'm also consistent because I know that the more consistency I have, the more my YouTube money is going to go up and having money that's going to cause me to have a softer life. So staying motivated and like being inspired by the soft life I'm going to live, that helps me to kind of stay on track with my goals. But anyway, what are your privilege stacking goals for the next 10 years? What are the most important privileges to you? Is it pretty privilege? Is it wealth privilege? Is it some form of status? Is it the privilege of having very high self-esteem or being very smart and intelligent? Maybe you want to read a bunch of books or something. Maybe you want to learn another language. Is it your fluid identity? Do you think that's one of your strongest privileges? Let me know what you think in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.